Big and trick trivia time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's Big and trick trivia time. And we'll feel it all right. Okay, come on, let's play. All right, all right, all right, all right. Welcome. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Sorry for yelling. My name is Ali with Bag of Tricks Entertainment. Thank you so much for being here tonight for our 1990s trivia night sponsored by the fountaindale public library so we're very excited to dive into this but before we start any of the questions we need to make sure that everybody out there joins the online game website very simple to do there was a link posted you can click on that i also put it in the chat it can also be found in the description below this video last but not least you can get to the website manually if you open up any internet browser and just go to the website at the bottom of the screen here on YouTube, crowd.live, and then it's going to ask you for a code, put in the game code, 11022A. Now, whether you clicked on the link or you got here manually, once you're at the game site, it's going to look the same for everybody, and it's going to look just like this. It's going to ask you for four pieces of information, the very top one. It's very important where it says enter your nickname. That is the name that you're going to go by tonight's competition. Whatever you put in that blank, everybody else is going to see. Uh, but everything else is completely private. The second one, where it says enter your email, obviously your email address. What this does is it allows you to rejoin the game in the event that your internet freezes or your web, uh, your web browser crashes. Last but not least, completely optional, the city and the state that you are playing from. Uh, we always like to see this when we host these online events. So once you've got as much of that in as you want to put, go ahead and click join. You're going to see this screen. And that means you're all set to go. Nothing else you need to do right now. You just hang tight until we get this game started. In the meantime, let me jump back over here. Say hello once again. My name is Ali. I'll be your host. I'm not alone in this room. My wife Gina is here. We have two dogs uh, in the building. Uh, in this room, we have three dogs in the building. <laughs> two dogs in this room. Uh, Taco's here. Uh, and let's see. Come here, buddy. Yeah. Here's our newest addition. We're currently fostering, but we're seriously considering adopting. This is Mozzie. Uh, his name was Mazda because he was found underneath a car in Chicago. And I guess it was Mazda. Uh, so I call him Mazi, and I refer to him in full name as Mozzarella. Uh, I think he agrees. Who doesn't love Mozzarella? Who doesn't love Mozzarella? So he's chilling. He'll be here. You may hear him. He's been learning to get his bark voice back. Pierre's here too, but he's sleeping. Uh, so anyway, I wanted you to know who's in the building because you might hear some of them. Uh, but anyway, I'll be the host. So once again, thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Thank you so much to the Fountaindale Public Library for sponsoring these monthly online trivia events. Uh, so tonight is all 1990s trivia. So that's one of the things they're all going to have in common. Uh, they are on the flip side going to vary in a number of ways we're gonna have questions from all sorts of categories tonight like sports pop culture music videos all sorts of things from the 90s your favorite fads crazy things that happen we're testing you through it all uh some of these questions might be simple some of these questions might be tough but what they all have in common is that they are all multiple choice and what that means is i'll be asking you a question you're gonna see it on the screen actually let me flip over here you're going to see it on the screen here on YouTube. You will also see it on your device, whatever device you're playing from. And then I'll read the question to you. I'll give you a second to think about it. And then I'm going to start the question timer. Once the timer begins, you'll have 30 seconds to choose whichever answer you believe is correct. So it's always going to be one of four, either A, B, C, or D. All you have to do is click the one that you believe is correct. But... Be careful, you wanna click that answer and lock it in as quickly as you can. The sooner you lock it in, the more points you'll earn if you are correct. So even if you're not sure 
of an answer today. If you're not sure of a question, maybe you have no idea, you, you don't remember it at all, you should still take a guess because throughout the game tonight, you are never uh, at risk of losing any points. Even if you answer incorrectly, you don't lose anything. So every question has one in four shot of guessing the correct answer and you don't lose anything for being wrong, which means you should never leave anything blank. It's the main lesson there. Uh, other than that, it's pretty much all you need to know about how the game works because we're just going to dive into the questions with a practice question here in a moment. What that means, this very first question is just for all of us together to learn how the system works. Uh, this first question won't be worth any points, even though it's going to work just like all of the other questions will today. Uh, but I do want to let you know we have events already planned for the upcoming months. Next month, actually, uh, couples out here, have no fear. We've got your Valentine's Day plans. Uh, you can be here online with us on February 14th from 7 to 8 p.m. Uh, and we are doing Pixar trivia, I believe. Let me see. <coughs> Excuse me. No, 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 not not Pixar. Uh, we're we're doing Game of Thrones. Oh, I uh, so we'll, we'll do Red Wedding trivia on um, Valentine's Day. That seems very appropriate, and I'm here for it. I'm uh, kind of into that. Yeah, Game of Thrones trivia next month. We also have March on the board already, and we will be doing for that month 1980s trivia. So 90s today, 80s. Uh, we'll jump back in two months. So lots of more, uh, lots more fun events coming up. Actually, now that I'm looking, we also have April and May here uh, on the board. In April... We will be doing a general knowledge trivia night. Fun one, throwing that into the mix. And then in May, on May 9th, we'll be doing Parks and Rec, the TV show trivia. Uh, so lots of fun stuff coming up. All of these have um, Facebook events that go along with them where you can find all the information. Make sure you have the links stored away for when those events do start. Uh, with that said, that's the future, but we are in the present. So let's get started with this game. The very first question, as I mentioned, is a practice question. Uh, what that means is it's not worth any points, but everything else about this question is going to work just like every other question this evening. So let me make sure this is set correctly for y'all. Good to go. All right, question number one, our practice question. No points up for grabs here. You have 30 seconds to answer once I start the timer and you see the answer options. What is the name of your host? today that's me what's my name is it john paul george or ali you have a guess yeah are you playing this one no gina played along last week with our was it general and knowledge last plays baby which review was it uh 2021. Oh, yeah, Apparently 2021. I wasn't around for the last year. No, I think you've done the best job of blocking everything out. That's something to be proud of. <laughs> all right, everybody's in. Let's take a look. I think we all did pretty well here. Uh, again, this one's just for fun. Two people said John, one each said Paul and George, and 13 of you correctly said Ollie. Great job. Off to a good start. Uh, I believe we have quite a few people out here tonight. Uh, it's been a while, so let me pull this chat up say hello before we dive into the important questions here oh if we're doing so well no <laughs> hey christiane middleton lens hey thank you for the the tip i saw that uh mama lens and team florida thank you thank you hey amy jk oh mr rice crispy nice to see ya lots of people out here welcome welcome looks like we might have a fun not real person here uh but everybody else thanks for being here here we go question number one is done here's question number two uh what was the spice girls first u.s single if you were there probably remember what was the spice girls oh, first u.s single was it say you'll be there wanna be spice up your life or to become one i feel like the song changed my life <laughs> i think it changed a lot of lives it. a lot of lives not seriously but like it was a big deal oh heck yeah girl power remember still have girl power girl power oh i need a new computer oh, 
I think it's this track. Oh, are we talking about Saskatchewan? Yeah, because I see it on our shower curtain. Oh, like every day I see it. See, we both think yeah. of Christiane in the shower. Every single day we think of you in the shower. All right, everybody's in. And, and I also see Hudson Bay, and I think of Hudson Bay. <laughs> uh, guys, that's a double social. Cheers. Every single person got it right. Great job, everybody. Good to have you back. Uh, we're moving right in then. Question number three. In 1993, the largest shopping mall in the United States, the Mall of America, opened its doors in what state? Was it Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, or Massachusetts? Where could you then and still visit Mall of America? Well, we went there and played mini golf recently. We did recently. Four years four ago. Four years ago. <laughs> Four years ago, we went there. That's recently. It feels recently. Yeah, we did play mini golf. That was great. That was fun. Didn't go on any big rides, though. By the way, this is the mall from Stranger Things. This is not Mall of America. <laughs> Star Court. Uh, everybody's in. Let's take a look. 16 people said Minnesota. One person said Wisconsin. One person said Michigan. And uh, 16 people were correct. Great job yeah christian that's what's crazy about shopping malls is that they they only really came around in the 80s uh in, in the mid to late 80s and then they quickly you know they took over and then really died out for the most part by the early 2000s uh it's insane uh anyway yeah interesting to think about question number four released just a year after mall of america <laughs> arguably as important what was the first feature film released by filmmaker kevin smith the first film released by kevin smith in 1994 was it clerks dogma mall rats or chasing amy which one of these is your favorite oh well i know one that you haven't seen mall rats is my favorite that's good. which is yours we own it on blu-ray same yeah yeah oh yeah it's you and eric oh yeah it's not a schooner, it's a sailboat. A schooner is a sailboat. <laughs> Have you seen Ethan, uh, not Ethan, em not Ethan Embry, right? What's that guy's name? He's looking at the oh, schooner. Oh, yeah, from, um, uh, who's also with Jason Lee and, uh, yeah, yeah. And my name is Earl. Uh, yeah, he lost like 200 pounds and then put on like 40 pounds of muscle. Uh, anyway, the correct answer, most of you got this. Uh, Clerks is the correct answer. 1994, if I remember correctly, Dogma was second. Clerks the correct answer. Question number five. Speaking of movies in the 1990s, Jim Carrey, famously the first actor to earn $20 million for one film with the release of what 1996 comedy? What film was he paid $20 million for? First time ever. Was it Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, Liar Liar, The Truman Show, or The Cable Guy? Hello. All right. Everybody has a couple seconds left. All right, let's take a look. Uh, we're not too sure here. Not an overwhelming majority for any of these. One person said The Truman Show. Four people said Liar, Liar. Five people said The Cable Guy. Ten people said Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. Uh, so I think it's interesting that of these, probably the least successful uh, financially is the correct answer, The Cable Guy. Cable Guy. This was coming off of the height of Ace Ventura and Liar Liar and The Mask and those those early ones, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, and then he did The Cable Guy, which is actually a good film. Uh, but anyway, five of you got that right, which might have switched things up here as we look at the standings for the very first time. Uh, so I'm going to throw these up on the screen. Let's take a look and see where everybody is at currently after these first four questions. Remember, the first one was a practice question. Mert Werlin is in first. Team Cream in second. Chrissy Ann up in third. Smells like Trivia Spirit in fourth. Cleaning up like Danny Tanner in fifth. 
Burn, Butcher, Burn, and six. Fifi tied with the Cookie Catastrophe and the Cookie Catastrophe two in seventh. Full House minus one. Oh, again. Oh. In 10th, Laura and Bert and the Pooches. In 11th, Laura Marie. 13th and 12th, we have Fleabag McGee. In 13th, One Ton Fooey 2. In 14th, Mama Lens. In 15th, E-Dub. In 16th, Titanic Swim Team. In 17th, Pharma Kitty. In 18th, Jennifer. In 19th, and Chesera. In 20th. I'm not going to read those all every single time, but I do like to see who's out here. So thanks for your patience. Jen Stewart is coming. She's here, though. By the time I grow my book. <laughs> uh, you know what? It's amazing how, like, by halfway through, you're singing it. Yeah, I was already singing it. That was beautiful, Jen. Sterna. All right. Somebody's got a drink. Uh, question number six. Dennis Rodman, you might have heard of him, filed for annulment after only nine days of marriage to what actress slash model in 1998, was it Yasmin Bleeth, Madonna, Pamela Anderson, or Carmen Electra? Yes, we're going to watch it. I already, it's, I saw it in your it eyes. May, I just, it, there, it looks like, like. I can't believe it's Lily James. It looks like they, they, it looks like the whole thing is deep faked with yeah. that new technology. I think it's an awesome role for her because she usually plays like very Yeah, very, people. yeah, yeah. Like, good for her. Well, and then who's, is it Sebastian Stan, yeah. right? <laughs> who we know is a shapeshifter. Yeah, he can do anything. Uh, all right, everybody's in. Two people said uh, Pam Pam, Pamela Anderson. 18 people said Carmen Electra. 18 people were correct. 90% of you got that right. Great job. Uh, question number seven. Uh, we're talking about Free Willy, my favorite soundtrack song of all time. What was the real name of the whale that made waves when he starred in the movie Free Willy? I just added that in for you. What was the real name of the whale that starred in the movie Free Willy? Was it Kiko, Humphrey, Moby Dick, or Shamu? Wait, who who fell? On Worst Cooks, who are we talking about? I think I missed. Uh, for Electra, I'm guessing. Oh, that makes sense. Her for implant. How? That sounds very painful. That does sound very painful. <coughs> By the time I grab my books. Thank you a lot, Jen Cerna. <laughs> that was I'll be, well. I'll be singing. Because when I first started reading it, I was like, oh, yeah, she's a huge reader. Like. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought. Like, oh, Jen Cerna had to put her books away to get to <laughs> yeah. her computer. She probably had 12 on the shelf uh, that she was re she finished reading today. Uh, everybody's in. I'm envious. Don't take it wrong. 18 people said Kiko. Two people said Shamu. That is another famous uh, whale. Uh, the correct answer, though, is Kiko. Kiko. Great job. Question number eight. It's coming up during the 1995-1996 season. The Bulls. Set a record for the most wins in one season. That was not broken until not last year, but a couple years ago. Uh, so this I need to update here until a few years ago. There we go. How many games did they win in that infamous 1995-96 season? Uh, was their final record 52 and 10, 62 and 10, 72 and 10, or 82 and 10? You can hurt an implant. Carmen Electra fell. Yeah. Yeah, I know you could bust an implant. I think that was like a... Oh, that that yeah, ended that, up being like a episode of House. Like, they didn't know that she had implants, so they never searched for it. But then House noticed that silicone tinges the corners of your fingernails blue after nine and a half days. I don't know. I'm making it up. Oh my God. And then he was like, oh, perhaps she had... And she, he probably went in and just cut her open like on the autopsy table. Everybody went nuts. And then he pulled out the implant and he was like, I, I wish I had a good finishing line there. But yeah. that's why I'm not a writer. Yeah, it's okay. He would have said something great. Yeah. Hugh Laurie probably would have made it up on the spot. Correct answer, most of you got it, is 72... And 10, incredibly, 72 and 10. Question number nine. Released in 1992, what was the very first video game to receive a mature 
rating by the ESRB, the Entertainment Software Rating Board? Was it Mortal Kombat, Resident Evil, Street Fighter, or Grand Theft Auto? Understood exactly. All right, everybody's in. Uh, we weren't too sure. A lot of you thought Mortal Kombat. Two people said Resident Evil. Five people said Street Fighter. Three people said Grand Theft Auto. The correct answer here is actually the game that really spawned the uh, entertainment software rating board in response to its overwhelming goriness at the time that was mortal combat good job most of you did get yeah 50 percent of you good job all right question number 10 we'll take another look at the standings after this uh this might be a little bit easier here tommy chucky and angelica were three of the stars of what nickelodeon cartoon tommy chucky angelica what are you watching is it rocco's modern life doug Rugrats or Hey Arnold? Bum, 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 bum. Oh, buddy. I know. There you go. All right, a couple seconds left. Get those answers in. Everybody's in. I don't think we struggled here at all. One person said, hey, Arnold. 19 people correctly said Rugrats. Rugrats. Good job. Uh, that's question number 10. We'll take another look at the standings here. Currently in first place is Christy Ann. 1,176 points. Second place cleaning up like Danny Tanner. Third place full house minus one. Uh, everybody else, take a look. See where you're at. You can see all the way from the top to the bottom of the scoreboard. Let's take a look. We'll get into the next set here in just a moment. We have plenty more questions. If you're not doing as hot as you'd like to be just yet, don't give up hope. We've only done 10 questions, really nine questions, uh, and we have 35 total. Plenty more to come. All right, here we go. Question number 11. What 1995 smash hit movie gave us the famous Tom Hanks line, Houston, we have a problem. Was it Apollo 13, Impact, 2012, or Armageddon? Have you seen every movie on this one? No, I have not seen 2012. I think... My God, remember when that was... Thing that we were yeah, afraid you, of. you know what? We all thought we dodged a dodged a bullet there. <laughs> Maybe the Mayans were onto something. Oh my god! We should have just. <laughs> Maybe it was just like a, a reset thing. Alrighty. Everybody's in, guys. No trouble here. Uh, this is how you can tell I shuffle up the questions for y'all. I don't like to keep them in any type of order because we get some questions like this that I had 100% confident in you. Uh, confidence that you would all get this right and you did every single one of you answered correctly Apollo 13 great job question number 12 uh, in the movie heavyweights one of my favorites overweight children were spent were sent to spend the cu the summer at what camp what was the name of the summer camp that the children were sent to in the movie heavyweights it's a tough one but that's why we do multiple choice we can have some Tougher ones here. What was the name of the camp? Was it Camp Losers, Camp Hope, Camp Slim, or Camp Chub? Oh. How severe of an impact. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I forgot the word deep there. I'm pretty sure that was deep impact. Okay. 1998. Uh, kind of late to the game. Hey, John Jay. Good to see you. Never seen Armageddon, Chris? You know, that's one at this point that I feel like if you grew up when we grew up, I feel like you just have to see. Oh, hi, 
Hi, John. I feel like you just have to. I don't have an explanation. It's not a great movie. I'm sure it doesn't hold but up. It, it barely held up at the time. It speaks to the time. Yeah. yeah. You get to see Ben Affleck. and. It's, yeah, probably problematic. Yeah, everybody, it was problematic at the time. Three people said Camp Losers. 14 people correctly said Camp Hope. Mm-hmm. Camp Hope. Great job. Question number 13. In the 1990s, what would you dial on your telephone if you wanted to find out the number of the person who had just called you? Was it star six seven, star six nine, star six six, star six eight? Which of these are you dialing if you think your crush might have just called you and hung up? You want to find out. But then whoever called was smart enough to use the defensive tactic. (laughs) The other one on here. Yeah. Well, we probably didn't know somebody at ComEd knew was there was like a four digit code that could, then it was like a backup and then it just kept going. So, like, if you put in a four digit code, then if they put out the other one, these are the things I thought of as a kid. I don't know. Five people said star six seven. That was if you wanted to play defense. Uh, the correct number here is star six nine. Star six nine. Star six seven would block your name from showing up. Uh, but star six nine would tell the individual who called good job question number 14 talking about uh, one of the most popular nickelodeon game shows which of these options were not an actual team on legends of the hidden temple which of these were not an actual team (laughs) the computer just completely froze uh, all right, which of these was not an actual team on Legends of the Hidden Temple? Was it the Blue Barracudas, the Red Rhinos, the Silver Snakes, or the Green Monkeys? Do you know? Yes. Which one? Mm-hmm. Good job. Thanks. Bet that was Chris <laughs> Star six seven. If you want to make prank calls, you got it, Mert. Yep. Cam Chubb just sounds wrong. Yeah, it does. I have a lot of jokes I'm not gonna make there. Three people said the blue barracudas. Four people said the silver snakes. Nobody said the green monkeys. Everybody remembers them. Fourteen people said the red rhinos weren't uh, real. Um, a real team. I'm sure there's a red rhino somewhere. Uh, but that is the correct answer. The red rhinos were not. Not all of the teams had alliterative names. Good job. Question number 15. What MTV reality show debuted all the way back in 1992? With the slogan, strangers pick to live in a house to find out what happens when people stop being polite and start getting real. What was the name of this show? Was it Road Rules, Real World, Jersey Shore, or Singled Out? What were we watching? I think we talked about it on one of these streams. Um, so at some point, YouTube randomly recommended um, MTV Spring Break, like 1998. Uh-huh. It was just like a random yeah. hour and yes. a half segment, and they had uh, like in sync was performing in full denim suits, like and they were doing the runway, Daytona yeah. Beach, and they had a runway, but oh, it wasn't yeah. models. They literally just like pointed at people and told them to come up and walk it down the so runway. Weird. It was, it was not so weird. Comfortable. To watch. No. Uh, but so much fun. One person said road rules. Um, 20 people said real world. Correct answer. The real world. Good job. All right, let's take a look at these standings. We'll see if anything's changed. Uh, a little bit. We have cleaning up like Danny Tanner. Now up in first place, we have full house minus one in second. And the cookie catastrophe duh, in third. Everybody else, take a look. See where you're at. No, I'm going to give you just a second to do that. We're just about almost halfway through these so take a moment look at those we'll get started with the next set here in just a moment
All right, all right, all right. Here we go. Question number 16. <coughs> Who was the famous author of the Goosebumps series of children's novels, which debuted all the way back in 1992, have sold over 350 million copies since their first release. Who's the author? Is it R.L. Stein, Shel Silverstein, Lois Lowry, or Catherine Applegate? Thank you, Laura, uh, from Butch Van Dyke uh, and the Pups and Laura. Thank you so much for the tip. I really appreciate it. If anybody else sent one, I didn't see it yet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We always appreciate that. We love doing these for you guys. Uh, we will be doing more uh, as we're now in the throes of the cold months. Uh, and we are bundled up here. So I do expect to see some more online trivia in addition to these awesome events that Fountaindale uh, Public Library puts on for us each month. Uh, we will have more coming up. It'll be open, so keep an eye out there in the community if you're not a member yet. Uh, jump in that and also on our main page. Uh, and once again, nice little gimme here thrown in the middle with the shuffle function. The correct answer is R. L. Stein. Good job. All right, question number 17. Uh, what was the name of the very first mammal? It was a sheep. It was cloned back on July 5th, 1996. What was the name of the first cloned sheep? Was it Dewey, Daisy, Dolores, or Dolly? What's the name of the first cloned sheep? Hey, buddy, it's just a, I almost said a microwave. It's just a motorcycle. It's okay. No need to bark. All right, a couple seconds left. It's been hot here. Got to stay inside. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like legitimately, what's my, I got a little Alexa thing here now for Christmas. It's eight degrees outside um, without wind is what I'm seeing. Eight degrees. All right. Uh, everybody's in. I didn't expect 100% on this, but you know what? You guys are full of good surprises. 100% of you correctly answered Dolly. Nobody missed it. Dolly, the first cloned sheep. Thank you so much. All right. Question number 18. Maybe. Question number 18. There it is. Uh, what was the name of the sketch comedy show featuring, among others, Jim Carrey, Jimmy Fox, and David Allen Greer uh, that ended its run after five seasons on air uh, in 1994? What's the name of the show? Was it In Living Color, SNL, Mad TV, or Kids in the Hall? Oh, uh, Gina just brought in a special guest. He was wandering the halls. Oh, oh I got gotcha. you. Pierre had a, a vet visit today. He's doing okay, but he has an eye ulcer. Yeah. yeah. Not to be gross. But he's got some eye issues, so he's got to wear a cone for a while. But I think he likes it. I think he's making it work, honestly. Uh, he looks extra adorable. Yeah. But he's just all about sleeping all day, enjoying his food. We watch it. He's going to take this lamp down. Hey, buddy. We're good. All right, sorry about that. Everybody's in. Only one person said Mad TV. That's not too bad. The correct answer is In Living Color. Jim Carrey has gone on record saying if not for this show, he would not have had the career that he has enjoyed. Uh, question number 19. Uh, the Pokemon video game craze began in the United States back in 1998. Uh, at the time, Nintendo released two versions. At the same time, on Game Boy, they were each named a different color. Which of these is the correct combination? Which of these is the name of the first two Pokemon games released in the United States? Was it green and yellow, ruby and emerald, red and blue, or gold and silver? Oh, was the cone working? what it's there for all right hey if anybody's looking to buy some pokemon cards 
I know I just put my whole collection up on uh, online. I can hook you guys up. All right, everybody's in. Eight people said green and yellow. Eleven people said red and blue. Uh, one person said ruby and emerald. One person said gold and silver. All of these are actual names of colors that would be released. The correct answer here is red and blue. Red and blue. In Japan, uh, it was originally red and green. We got red and blue here. Question number 20. Question 20. Back to Nickelodeon for a moment. What is the name of Doug Funny's love interest on the Nickelodeon show Doug? What's the name of Doug Funny's love interest? Is it Patty Ketchup, Patty Mayonnaise, Patty Pepper, or Patty Mustard? <laughs> oh, bye. Everybody's in. <laughs> One person said Patty Mustard. Um, I'm gonna go with a theory that if, like, if Gina were playing this, Gina hates mayonnaise so much that she might actually sacrifice her own score just to not answer Patty Mayonnaise. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking that one other person might have done that. The correct answer is Patty Mayonnaise, though. Uh, great job. That's question 20, which means time for the score update. Currently in first place. Well, wow. If you named your team after um bob saget's character tonight you are doing well currently in first is cleaning up like danny tanner second full house minus one smells like trivia spirit in third everybody else take a look see where you're at i'm not going to read them all off here but you can see it's a close game too take a look at the points only uh, about 90 points from first to second uh less than that from second to third looks like i'm sorry a little bit more than that second to third uh, but then only 40 points from 3rd to 4th, only about 40 from 4th to 5th, so very close. Lots of opportunities to move up or down the board here. Question. <laughs> 1886. Jennifer has 1886. Is that what I'm supposed to read? All right, here we go. Question number 21. Who finished that home run chase with 70 home runs? Was it Sammy Sosa, Barry Bonza, Mark McGuire, Ooh, Bonza or Ryan Sandberg? You made pasta? The other day, you ate some. Oh. Bonza pasta. All right, all right. <laughs> Jensen, 1886. Uh, I thought Chris would like that. Well, better if it was 1860-something. All right, everybody's in. So a couple of us were unsure here. Five of us thought it was Sammy Sosa. He was part of this uh, this big battle. 14 people said Mark McGuire. The correct answer was, in fact, Mark McGuire. Sammy Sosa would finish with 66, I believe. Question number 22. What 1991 film was the very first animated movie ever to be nominated in the Best Picture category at the Oscars? This is before there were separate categories for animated films, too. So what was the first animated film to be nominated for the Best Picture film uh, category, the Best Picture Oscar at the Academy Awards? Was it Aladdin, The Lion King, Beauty and the Beast, or Toy Story? goes for it <laughs> love it all right everybody's in three people said the lion king and toy story toy story was a little bit later the lion king was also uh, a little bit later the correct answer here is beauty and the beast good job beauty and the beast it didn't win but it was nominated <laughs> at least it was nominated i don't know question 23 <laughs> here it is 
Uh, speaking of animated films, let's talk computer, computer animated films. How many full-length feature films did Pixar release in the 1990s? Was it one, two, three, or four? Find out soon. What do you think? How many full-length films did Pixar release in the 1990s? One, two, three, or four? That was kind of a big time for Pixar. I don't know. I wish I knew. I don't actually see the answer back here. It doesn't reveal it to me. It's just all random. Uh-huh. <laughs> I used to, I used to convince now granted when I would host trivia at bars <clears throat> people are typically uh maybe not more intoxicated than this audience, I don't know. Uh, but I would always have fun if somebody would try to get me to tell them the answer before I would reveal it to the whole crowd. And every now and then, she'd be like, I don't know. And they'd be like, how do you not know? And I said, I just get the sheet, and it's a scratch-off thing, so I just read the question. When I go up there, I scratch oh, it off. Fun, though, it would be amazing. Uh -huh. But it's like one out of ten people com completely buys it. Aww. And they're like, oh, cool, cool, cool. And if I could catch it, I would love to just like pantomime scratching, just keep it going. <laughs> All right, don't never get that deep. Uh, yeah, anyway, the correct answer here we had Toy Story, uh, and then we had Bugs Life, and then Toy Story 2. The correct answer is three. Three films. I believe The Incredibles was just after the millennium. So good job. Question number 24. In 1997, Mike Tyson took a bite. Out of which boxer's ear? Mike Tyson took a bite out of which boxer's ear? Was it Buster Douglas, Roy Jones <laughs> Jr., Evander Holyfield, or Oscar De La Hoya? seconds left let's take a look everybody's in uh i was have we talked were you watching this live were your parents did they watch boxing uh no i don't think so we never watched but i can't remember another boxing match that my parents watched i'm sure so. maybe they did but but this is the only one i was ever around for uh and yeah i saw him take a big old bite a couple bites out of a vander holy field like, if your name is holy field and he bites a hole in you like really can you be mad great job everybody question number 25 the tv show frasier was a spin-off of what 1980s hit sitcom frasier was a spin-off of what other popular show was it mash family ties cheers or roseanne movie critics club at school and I say, oh nice oh we haven't watched Encanto no, yet we are very behind on our TV we are oh sorry bud sorry kinda I kinda forgot you were there I'm sorry <laughs> so many dogs uh, everybody is in and nobody missed it great job A couple of spinoffs here cheers the correct answer Question number 26. Often considered one of the greatest video games of its generation, GoldenEye 007 was released in 1997 for what video gaming system? Was it Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, Xbox, or PlayStation? couple seconds left most of you locked in answers pretty quickly but we're not at 100 percent correct this time a couple people said dreamcast playstation 15 people though correctly said third best selling best selling game on the nintendo 64 nintendo 64 great job question number 27 who became in 1999 okay, the okay. most muscular governor 
in Minnesota history? Who was the most muscular governor in Minnesota history? Was it Jesse Ventura, Hulk Hogan, Arnold Schwarzenegger, or Randy Savage? Hey, Taco. Chill. No need to bark. You know what I'd like to rewatch as well is Onward. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That was a good one. That was good. And inside. You know what? I should probably just rewatch like all the Pixar films. <laughs> uh, everybody's in. One person said Hulk Hogan. Two people said Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was a governor, uh, and not too much after this, about four years later. But that was in California. The correct answer: Jesse the Body. Ventura. What a, what a dude. Uh, question number 28. Uh, although, sh oh shoot, this is sad. Man. Although Sinead O'Connor made a hit mm -hmm. out of the song Nothing Compares to You, who originally wrote and also performed the track? Who wrote and performed the song that Sinead would cover? Was it Joni Mitchell, Prince, Carol King, or Cat Stevens? Alright, alright. Yeah, we're pretty sure on this one. Well, at least we're all thinking the same thing. Hopefully it's correct. Four people did say Joni Mitchell. One person said Carol King. I would always, if there's a song writing question and I don't know the answer, I would either go Prince or Carol King. I absolutely. Um, but in this one, if you said Prince, you were correct. Good job. Uh, and I prefer the Prince version. You prefer the Sinead O'Connor version of the song, which is good. That's great. You know, we can listen to both. Question number 29. Uh, what was Green Day's best-selling album of the 90s? It was one of the best-selling albums of the 90s. Uh, all of theirs did pretty well, but which of these was by far their largest? Was it Insomniac, Kerplunk, Nimrod, or Dookie? Hmm? I remember Really? I was like, that's such a cool picture. <laughs> I remember just trying to figure out. I know, I see maybe why there are rules on how old kids should buy these things. But I remember sitting around the lunch table with other kids, and it must have been sixth or seventh grade, and going over the lyrics, you oh, know, the lyrics yeah. books. Oh, that's so funny. And it's like, ah, we did not have the edited versions. <laughs> that was interesting. Two people each said Insomniac Kerplunk. One person said Nimrod. And 16 people correctly said Dukey. Good job. It's going to get down to four degrees. Question number 30. Uh, what was the famous rage-inducing last racetrack on Super Mario Kart? I want to finish Super Mario Kart. The last track you have to complete is which of these? Is it Rainbow Road, Peach Beach, Toad Harbor, or Waluigi Stadium? Halsey sample. Eternal Sunshine of Spotted Mind. Oh my gosh. Alright, let's take a look. Uh, a couple people said Peach Beach, Toad Harbor. All are real tracks, but the correct answer here always fall off. Rainbow Road. Rainbow Road. Sounds so nice. Question number 31. In 1990, George H.W. Bush joined the ranks of millions of children when he publicly announced his hatred <laughs> Of which vegetable? Okay. Why is there a truck backing up? Okay. Uh, <laughs> George H.W. Bush hated which vegetable and told the world? Was it broccoli, Brussels sprouts, spinach, or celery? I forgot about this. Yeah. Oh, I got you. Oh, there you I got go, you. bud. You. No need to be oh, loud. Oh, no. No. 
you can get your point across without resorting to guttural grunts. <laughs> That's my new punk band. <laughs> guttural grunts. <laughs> yeah, but it's like a classical acoustic three piece. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, and one Mongolian throat singer. Everybody's in. Correct answer here is broccoli. Broccoli. Uh, question number 32. Eddie Murphy, you might have heard of him, appeared in what 1991 Michael Jackson music video? Eddie Murphy in what 1991 Michael Jackson music video? Was it Man in the Mirror, Remember the Time, Thriller, or Smooth Criminal? I base my answer on discussing the Inside Out movie. Yeah, Christiane, that's actually what I was, that's what got me thinking that I really should just rewatch all the Pixar films because I do really want to watch Inside Out. But I also want to watch Big Hero 6 and Wreck It Ralph, so I should just do like all the, America. all the Disney animation and Pixar animation. Let's catch up on everything else we have to do. First. Yeah, no, that's fine. This is probably a priority though. Yes. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Everybody's in. Uh, this one, yeah, he was, uh, this is the ancient Egypt set. The ancient Egyptian set. Remember the time. Good job. 13 of you got it right. Question number 33. Only a couple left. You had me at hello. It's a famous line uttered by which actress? In the 1996 film, Jerry Maguire. Was it Christy Swanson? Julia Roberts? Renee Zellweger? Or Jennifer Aniston? Help me. Yeah. Have you seen a picture of the kid? Um, kid from Jerry Maguire. What was his name? Jonathan Lipnicki. Mm -hmm. Everybody's in. Only one person missed this. Uh, it was not Julia Roberts. It was Renee Zellweger. Renee Zellweger. Good job. Lots of people getting points here. It's going to be a close game. Question 34. Which early 90s rapper, quote, cooked MCs like a pound of bacon? Was it Vanilla Ice, Ice Cube, Snow, or MC Hammer? A lot of cold names in the 90s. Ice cubes, snow, yeah. and ice. There was also iced tea. There was also... Mr. Freeze. <laughs> Mr. Freeze? Is the, well, the bad guy in Batman, but that yeah. was Dr. Freeze. Oh, shoot. He, really? Yeah. He was Dr. Freeze? Oh, yeah. So there's a whole thing about how that whole movie, like, <laughs> if you, if you kind of take a different look at it, Batman's just kind of a jerk. Like, Dr. Freeze, yeah, he wasn't doing all the best things, but he was just trying to, like, save his wife. And it ended up I mean, taking a, a dark turn. Like yeah, yeah. They don't intend to be villainous. Also, that was also on oh, no, Schwarzenegger. What a role. Human head weighs eight pounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, correct answer here is Vanilla Ice. Great job. All right, two questions left. Number 35. Which of the following names is not an actual name of one of the members of the band Hanson? Which of these is not an actual Hanson brother? Is it Isaac, Brandon, Zach, or Taylor? Do you know this one? Yes. <laughs> of course. How dare you? Ice to meet you. So many puns in that movie. And so many bat nipples. That's the bat nipple movie, right? That's um uh, that's Batman and Robin. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the one that's, um, is that uh, Val Kilmer? George Clooney, right? <laughs> George Clooney and Chris O'Donnell and their bat suits. They're like supposed to be armored, but then they have nipples and in them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> armored suits. I remember the trapeze scene in that movie oh. as a kid. It made me feel like it yeah. really messed with my head. It was really well done. Uh, the correct answer here, four people said Isaac. That's the oldest brother. Uh, one person said Taylor. That was the middle brother. Zach is the youngest. The correct answer, though, is Brandon. Brandon. 
Question number 36. Beginning in 1991, the Super Bowl halftime show, coming up soon here, uh, moved away from its traditional marching band entertainment and featured the very first pop music act. Which band headlined that first halftime show in 1991? Was it the Red Hot Chili Peppers, R.E.M., Nirvana, or New Kids on the Block? Uh, Chris, yeah, how was the Hanson beer? I remember, I think Andrew and Laura had it at Food and Wine Festival. Mm -hmm. They saw Hanson, they played one year, and I think they ended up trying it. They couldn't, like, buy it to bring it, um, but I think they tried it. I remember, yeah, mmm hops. All right, everybody's in. Final question, let's take a look. Three people said the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They have played, but that was uh, a much more recent. That was the last 10, 15 years. Uh, one person said Nirvana. 17 people said New Kids on the Block. And KOTB is the correct answer. Great job, everybody. You were hanging tough all the way till the end here. Hey. Uh, you made it through 90s trivia, so all we have left to do right now is go over the final standings this evening. So whether you finish in first or last, remember, that's not what really matters. What matters is that hopefully you had some fun. Uh, and that is thanks to the Fountain Dale Public Library. Thank you so much once again to them for sponsoring these events and putting this on every single month. Don't forget, next month, February 14th, uh, get your honey next to your side and come play Game of Thrones trivia on Valentine's Day. Uh, and then lots of fun trivia coming up over the next few months so make sure you check out our facebook page until then here are the final standings of the game tonight in first place we have clean it up like danny tanner great job second place team cream what's up team cream third place smells like trivia spirit everybody answered super well and super quickly tonight good job everybody everybody else you can see where your score landed you here on the board until next time be safe take care of yourself take care of each other and we'll see you for more trivia Bye, missed you. soon Bye, everybody.